So this is one of the first plants, but it's not the oldest plant here by far. Uh, this one I came from seeds from a, from a pepper, I believe a bell pepper that I had. Mm, maybe nine months ago. And so here they are growing, all growing together inside this pot, um, which I picked up at a thrift store. And it's right next to, oh, there's some water. We have to fix that. So we could just do it like that. Yeah. Let's try now. And then these onions came from the end, the, the part you normally don't eat of the green onion. These came from those, from a farmer's market. And they're maybe six months old. Now this one is a little older. This is also a pepper, shishito pepper. But this plant is maybe three years old. And uh, it is the seed of a seed that I grew from a shishito pepper that I ate from Costco. And this one has basically become a perennial at this point. And there's a couple peppers on there starting. You can sort of see them. And this parsley plant, uh, we've been around a long time. I think this parsley plant, uh, our relationship is like five years old, maybe. And it keeps coming, slowly. And you can see sometimes there's little shards of things. This is from a ceramic sculpture by uh, an artist named Emily Melander. Uh, same with the candle holder. But I like to put things into the plants because the plants really respond to the, to the materials and the nutrients of outside forces. So we can see a, a rock back there. I don't know what kind it is. It came out of a river. Um, and then we have a bone here that has been in the water for a long time, has barnacles on it. So that's all good sources of calcium, of iron, of different minerals like that. And this mint, which has already been harvested once, you can see the blooms here. Get a focus. Yeah, you can see the blooms there have already begun. So what happens, what I do with my mint when it's time to harvest, I pick everything after it's bloomed, just after it's bloomed, and then because the blooms are so new and the plant needs to produce, it will create a whole new set of mint leaves this way. And so this is an easy way to, uh, to put that together, to make that happen for you to get double the mint. And so these are my tomato plants. It's an heirloom variety. I don't know if you can see that very clearly. There we go. It's an heirloom variety. And they're all still green. I did pick my first set and make fried green tomatoes with them. And they were delicious. So I'm very excited what these two tomato plants have going here. And I planted these from, let's see, these are also from an older tomato plant. The plant itself is like four or five years old. And then these uh, were from cuttings that I took and soaked and brought in. But they're going to be very delicious. It's a, not a heavy producer probably, and I, may not have enough sun here for it because this area doesn't get a lot of sun 
you gotta go in between these trees here for the sun. And that's all it gets. So let's continue our tour. Um, this next one has been around for a long time. It was in my studio indoors for a long time and I've just brought it here and this is English Ivy and I'm hoping that it will climb all over this fence and I've got some cat's tongue I don't remember the genus name for it but these two these have been here for a long time and this is a new addition this one's a new addition this is a ginger plant, the standard kind of ginger you get at a store, right? Everyone can see that there. Uh, and and this is how it grows, kind of like a bamboo or something. And then these are all bottles that I've pulled out of the ground. Let's see what else do we have here. This one, which we found at a game reserve, the Vinegar Hill Game Reserve, and uh, growing just like this when we were pulling out bottles. I have some fossils that I found here, but they're not plants, so they're not really on the tour. And then we've got all these incredible basil plants. Now these are also from seeds from a seed. So so this one, like the like the shishito, is my own variety. And one of the things I've been doing in in making variations of plants is to uh, produce edibles and herbs and things like this that will grow in closed pots because then you can leave them for longer. You don't have to water them as often. So closed pot, meaning there's no drain on it. These are leftovers from when I was doing pea sprouts. This is ground elder seeds. So you can see the little black seeds in there. And these are the flowering portions of the ground elder. And that'll be on our tour later. This was a plant that someone gave me. I don't know why, but it doesn't like to bloom. I've had it for maybe a year now, but this particular one doesn't like to bloom. Hers blooms like crazy. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And this is Oxalis. This is a kind of red or purple oxalis, I don't know what people say, but this is an edible plant. Uh, the entire plant is edible, um, including the flowers. And this came from a shop, um, not, actu not a shop, actually a, a woman on the side of the road uh, who was selling plants. She had a lot of plants and she obviously had a very good green thumb. And then this aloe was also in this pot with the oxalis. So they come as a pair. This is a jewel plant. This is from a cutting uh, of a plant that was given to me by another artist in Missouri, Mary Elizabeth Van Dyne. And we have this spider plant here with its with one long tentacle still going and landing here on this stone. And we've got this peace lily, which I actually gave as a gift to someone. And then it colonized the whole pot, you know, a pot about this size. And I decided to take a cutting from it and it's colonizing this new pot. And this was the first year that it actually bloomed. 
And we don't have a lot of seed, but there is a couple little seed pods here. You can see them. But the blooms are beautiful. They're very small. Oh, here's one that's just still happening. Let's see if we can get a view. Look how beautiful they are. And then I have this stevia plant, which I also picked up at this sale. Very beautiful, tall stevia plant. And I've noticed underneath it, we've got some oxalis. And this one, which, because I often have a lot of it coming up in my pot, and there's another one there, I think it might be cilantro or coriander, whatever you like to say. And then this next plant has a really fascinating story. This is a neem tree, um, which are native to southern India. And this tree, believe it or not, um, was growing in a basement with no light no nothing, just growing out of dirt in the basement. And I'm not sure why it's here, because we're in New York. This is not, uh, this is not typical. Um, but I plotted it in this, in this large white pot, and hopefully it will stay alive. We've got some rosemary which I picked up from a farmer's market. Uh, this chocolate mint was a gift from a friend. This is Cuban oregano, which I think is one of the best oreganos to use and to cook with and to make teas or any kind of medicines out of. Um, the leaves are thick, almost like a succulent, and it makes it just perfect for cooking. I put it in when I use when I put in oil sometimes, instead of as a finishing garnish, I add it uh, with the oils, cooking oils, and it's really turned out quite nice. This tomato, I've been growing for a while, but this was also an indoor plant, and it hasn't done anything. It hasn't produced anything. So this squash has just come up also. And I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. I haven't looked it up or anything. I'm just kind of watching and, and wondering, but it's in a pot with rosemary. So it's kind of a good experiment to see, uh, to see what will happen with the flavor of the squash. And then we've got, I've got one avocado here. I have more in the city. Um, but I didn't feel like they were ready to be disturbed or moved. Uh, this one is a swamp milkweed. So this is a native host to butterflies and things like that. Sorry, camera, I gotta pop them up. There we go, that's better. And there's a couple other shoots off of it here too. And then behind that, we've got a night blooming cirrus. And this one has been with me for a long time too. And you can see again what I do in the bottom here. I add leaves. I add leaves, uh, porcelain, this is porcelain sculpture, and uh, some sort of calcium enriching, you know, object like a shell or something like that. Here's another one of the basils, but two of the basils put in larger pot. Uh, and they also have some squash growing with them, which is great. And some of these other, potentially cilantro. And then I saved this one, this is the best plant for last. This is an aerial variety of a potato uh, that is commonly called the yamberry. You can see it there. So that's a tuber. This is an aerial tuber, so it creates 
its fruit, its tuber above ground, all along the vine. And this plant almost went instinct, uh, almost went instinct, extinct, almost went extinct. This plant almost went extinct, and now it's uh, coming back. A lot of farmers are starting to grow it. They're, I don't think they're full size yet, but they're excellent for uh, nutritional value, uh, for flavor, and just the simple ease of it. And it's also a perennial, so this is probably, this is this plant's second or third year, I can't remember. Second, I believe. And I don't know how long it will keep going. I might bring it inside to see if I can just keep it alive and keep it producing.